it feels amazing. Um, yeah, it's a huge, I feel like a huge 11 year weight lifted off my shoulders. So now finally people can stop asking me about 2012 here now that I came back and led all the laps I did and, and, you know, won both stages and won the race. So really good car. That was the main thing and, and just had to execute all day and made my job pretty easy. Um, I think I held my breath, my breath for 30 laps at the end. Uh, when I got out, I was completely out of breath because I was just like, all right, what's going to happen this time? What's going to be the flat tire or two guys, you know, running into each other? What was going to happen to bring that late caution out? And, uh, you know, I knew we were in control of the race and I knew we had a big lead and I was just trying to manage the gap really. And, uh, yeah, I was definitely waiting, um, for something to happen. And luckily it didn't. I don't know if it was Jason or Stevie, but after the race on the cool down lap, they were kind of giving you a hard time saying you're awfully quiet in there. <laughs> were you doing yeah. some self-reflection, emotional? What were the feelings in the car uh, at that yeah. time? Yeah, it was definitely emotional. Um, I'm not a very, you know, people that know me, I'm not an emotional guy. And uh, it took me a minute before I could key up and say anything because I just couldn't talk. Um, yeah, it's just been such a long road. And, you know, a lot of self-doubt along the way and and just you know wondering is it ever going to happen um am i good enough to do this you know there's it's so easy to doubt yourself and be down on yourself um but you know you just keep digging keep pushing through and like i said it was just you know a huge just a huge relief to to get that honestly the white flag as soon as i got the white flag i knew it was over and uh, i just was trying to get it back around you know as, as smoothly as i could um and yeah i was definitely choking up coming to the checkered for sure we'll go to marty then to zach then to bob marty stacala rock sports net race pro weekly it seems like this runs in the family here ryan martin <laughs> wins his first career cup race at dover now you win your first career xfinity race at dover just what does that mean as well when it comes to the coincidence of this yeah it's cool i didn't even think of that um yeah it's really cool and i think when he won that day they dominated that race too from what i remember so it's cool to do it and make a statement like that um, you know, one of the hardest tracks on the schedule, uh, you know, it's, it's named the monster for a reason. It's, it's a tough track and, you know, a lot of people struggle to figure it out. And, you know, I've had my, my moments of, of trying to figure out how to get around this place. Um, and I have learned a lot from Martin for sure. And that's been a huge help. You know, obviously JGR has got great cars and, and they're always good here. Um, but I've had this one circled for a while and, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty special of, of all the places to get it, it's, you know, where I gave it up 11 years ago with six to go or whatever it was. And, um, you know, felt like that was a huge, could have been a huge turning point in my career. And it's been a, a battle ever since. So to finally come back 11 years later with the same team and, you know, get it done is, is really rewarding for me. Obviously, your father was very emotional on top of the pit box and I guess in victory lane as well. What did he say to you when you finally uh, saw each other? He didn't really say much, honestly. <laughs> I think he was still at a loss for words, too. Um, you know, he's obviously, he's he's been around racing his whole life, and he's watched Martin and myself come up through the ranks and uh, been a huge part of, of our success. And, um, you know, it's definitely been, I think, frustrating for him as well with, you know, how my career has been so up and down and, and been so close and you just couldn't quite get the job done. So he's... Uh, He's definitely seen behind the scenes of how how much I've battled and worked and struggled and you know done everything that I've done to stay relevant in the sport and stay involved and um, you know a lot of that resiliency and and um, refusal to give up I think comes from from him. <laughs> I hope so. I need a new shirt now. I can finally do a wind t-shirt. <laughs> we will go to Zach and then to Bob. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Ryan, uh, first of all, congratulations. But I'm, I'm curious, too, um, just how, um, how how Martin has helped you through this process as well. I spoke to him in Victory Lane, and um, he talked about that journey and that struggle that um, you've put in the effort to uh, behind the scenes to get to this point, um, to not only be able to get behind the wheel of this car, but to capitalize on the opportunity, get the win here. Um, how meaningful is that part of it? And, and in what ways has Martin helped you uh, over this journey? I mean, he's helped me really my whole career. Um, you know, he was, when I started racing in 2006, he was already in cup. Uh, so there was a lot I could learn from him. Um, I came up through the ranks in totally different cars than, than he did up until we got to the 
you know, the K&N E-Series, uh, which is now the Arca E-Series. And, you know, he was definitely very helpful when, when I got to that, um, kind of that transition to full-size cars. Um, but, you know, he's he's not one to go out of his way and, you know, call me and be like, here's what you got to do this weekend. He's he's more of a, you know, if I if I ask him, he's going to tell me. And if there's something he thinks I really need to know, he'll he'll send me like a four or five word text. Um, he's definitely an in-person kind of talker. He's not a texter at all, and he's definitely not a phone call guy. So usually I got to find him and and ask. And you know, depending on what it is, he'll text me. Um, you know, but you know what he's been through in his career uh, back in 2013 when he was basically out of a ride, didn't know what was going to happen. Um, you know, to to be you know, obviously his biggest fan and watch him battle through that and come out the other side and be a champion, uh, I think motivated me and, um, you know, inspired me to keep, you know, just keep digging, keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, and like I said, there's been a lot of, of really rough moments behind the scenes for me uh, personally, just trying to battle through all of it. And, you know, the, the mental side of it, the emotions, the, you know, doubting yourself, all of that, that goes into it. Um, you can't, <laughs> You can't doubt yourself as a race car driver and go out and perform. And that's something I've worked hard at this past two years. And I feel like that's something that Joe Gibbs Racing and Jason Ratcliffe, you know, Steve D'Souza, everybody at the Xfinity shop has, you know, given me the confidence. And, you know, they they believe when I get in the car that we can win. And that's, for me, I feel like a huge part of it. And I feel like that's something that I've not quite had over the years. Um, so to, to get with a group like this and have that confidence right off the bat has been huge for me and my confidence to be able to go out and, and just do my job. And days like today makes it feel, you know, makes it feel easy. You mentioned Jason, and um, it, I didn't realize it's already been since 2019, um, since he's been to Victory Lane in the series as well. Um, to bring this whole 19 team to Victory Lane, um, knowing that there are other drivers behind the wheel of this car um, and the challenges that that can you know, create, um, what does it mean to get this team to, to victory lane? It's huge. I'm happy to get Jason back in victory lane. He's, he was close a few times last year and I feel like he had some taken away from him and, uh, he definitely deserves it. His cars with multiple drivers last year have been really fast. And I think that just speaks to how good he is and how, how well you can adapt to working with guys of all experience levels and, and ages and driving styles. Um, I really, really enjoy working with him. Uh, just nice, calm, level-headed. If I get fired up, he keeps me calm, which is, is good. Definitely need that sometimes. Um, even at the end of the race, he was kind of just, you know, talk me through it, take care of your tires, driving away from him. Just, you know, that nice southern twang and low voice is, works wonders. So <laughs> it's cool. And, and yeah, it's I enjoy working with him. And, Getting to come back and work with him for a second year in a row, I feel like, was huge for both of us to kind of hit the ground running. And I think we showed that in Phoenix. And, um, yeah, I think, we, I think we both had this one circled on our calendar for sure. Thank you. We're going to go uh, to the back to Bob, and then over here to Dustin, Mark, and then Steven. Well, Bob Hockris, Fox Sports. Uh, Ryan, you do a lot of the Joe Gibbs sim sessions, correct? Yes. So what's it? When in, do, in all this time that you spend in the sim every week, are you, does it add to your confidence or does it add to your frustration knowing that you're doing sim and yet maybe on a lot of those weekends you're not racing? No, honestly, I enjoy it. I feel like, you know, it's something that keeps me kind of in the mix behind the scenes. Um, I, like, I always like to be helping work towards a goal. So if I can help the race team work towards being better and I can give them, you know, any kind of feedback or, or anything that's helpful and helps move the needle um, now it makes makes me feel like I have worth and, and you know my my talents and skills are worth something and being put to good use so I enjoy it I feel like it's made me a better driver um, having to run so many laps every week and having to you know look at data and really understand what driver inputs and what you know a guy behind the wheel can do differently behind the um, or in the car, you know, I get to look at a lot of data of a lot of different drivers and compare driving styles. And, and I feel like I've just learned so much in that area that I've been able to apply, you know, even when it comes to how I study for the race weekend and I look over, you know, SMT data and um, race tape and all that stuff. 
I feel like there's so much more that sticks out to me now that I've learned from all my time um, in the simulator. We're going to go to Dustin, then Mark, then Steven. Dustin Albino, Jay Ski, Ryan, in our conversation this morning, I asked you, you know, what, what, did, what do you think this does for you if you win one of the final two uh, starts this year? Now that you've accomplished that, what, what are you thinking? I'm not sure yet. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I, I've said many times my goal is to, to stay with Joe Gibbs Racing and go full-time Xfinity Racing. Um, and I talked to Coach on the phone after the race, and I said, we got to figure out how to make this happen, and he agreed. So I think that's the next step is figuring out how we can – how, how we can do that you know, I feel like if I can drive one of these cars every week and uh, you know be be on the track every week with this team and this group you know I feel like we can win a lot of races and definitely uh, compete for a championship we'll go to Mark then Steven then Zach in the back Mark Garrow PRN Ryan first congratulations it was awesome to watch you from way up high just go through the middle of the corners like nobody else <laughs> all day long wasn't even close is this the way you dreamed of winning your first race? You know, you have two ways maybe of doing it, right? You have the last lap out of turn four pass, and then you have, I completely smashed the field <laughs> into the ground. Did, is this the way you dreamed the first win would come? It's, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I've dreamed a lot of, uh, over the years of wins, and I feel like before every race, I'm like, I daydream about, all right, this is going to be the one, and I, you know, think about how I'm going to, come across the line, do burnouts, jump out of the car, you know, all this stuff. And it's never happened. And, you know, I've had to kind of throttle back on that and, you know, be realistic with myself and almost to the point where I've been pretty, you know, pessimistic about everything. And even in the race today, uh, like I said earlier, just even when I took the lead on like lap 20, I'm like, all right, what's going to happen? What's going to ruin my race? What's going to put me a lap down? Where am I going to get a flat tire or have something break or blow up? Whatever it is. Um, I feel like I'm always waiting for that to happen. And yeah, it's, I think leading every, or not every lap, leading a lot of laps and winning both stages um, feels a lot better than just pulling it out off the last corner. Uh, you know, shows that I can put a whole race together. We'll go to Steven and Zach. Uh, Steven Stump, frontstretch.com. Ryan Koretz in the win, obviously a long time coming. Uh, you had also mentioned about you know, kind of thinking about what things would go wrong when it was kind of counting down those laps, long green flag run, huge lead. Obviously, there's also the questions of, uh, you know, the car's trying to make it on fuel at the end. What was going through your mind as those laps ticked down? Well, that, that long run there, um, the first 50 laps, I was trying to take care of my tires and I was just waiting. I was having radio problems. I couldn't hear them very well, and I was waiting for them to tell me to pit, and I was nervous that I wasn't going to be able to understand them and miss pit road. So that was my first worry. And, um, you know, we pitted. I felt like I gave up a little bit of time getting to pit road, just trying to be cautious. Uh, it's so easy to miss pit road here. I haven't raced here since 2018, so I didn't really have a good idea of where I needed to start slowing down. Um, so that was my next worry, if I was going to miss pit road. Uh, we made that, then I was, you know, trying to make sure I didn't speed, but optimize my speed on pit road. Um, you know, and then, yeah, leaving pit road, it was just a matter of hoping a caution didn't come out. And, uh, yeah, luckily it didn't happen. And then my second question is, um, one of your runner-up finishes was back in 2012, um, leading late, then the lap car, then Lagana got by. Uh, Granted, it's been a long time, but if you're if you're going to win a, um, your first race, did you kind of picture it being at Dover? I mean, I've I picture it like I said, I picture it. Whatever week I'm going into, I'm like, this <laughs> is going to be the one. And I felt like Phoenix was was going to be a really good shot at it after practice and how good we were. Okay. And it was close. Yeah. Um, just ran out of time, but yeah. yeah, I felt like I always felt like if I could go back to Dover and. Uh, you know, redeem myself for that race all those years ago, that it'd be pretty special for sure. All right, thank you. Yep, thanks. We will go to Zach. Zach at Tanzu Eddie, kicking the tires.net. You mentioned your dad, who was uh, pretty quiet but emotional. Martin seemed a bit more, uh, your brother seemed a lot more um, kind of animated. He ran up to the car. <laughs> he was fired up. <laughs> yeah, how, what was he saying to you? What were those emotions from him? Uh, he was just, you know, he said, he said, good job. And, well, he used a lot more colorful language than that, but. He basically said good job and he was proud of me and you know way to get it done um yeah it was it was funny to see him run out on pit road when i was looking for victory lane and waving his arms around and all that because 
he's not usually very animated like that. Um, but he was he was fired up, so it was really cool to see. Are people gonna stop calling you Vine Truex Jr. after this? I don't care. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> I'm fine with it.